Hey, this is Mark, aka Nectar Chunky, with a new tutorial for you. This tutorial is a kind of basic tutorial to introduce you to controlling your mixer and your sequencer channels using the Nectar. The applications of this are fantastic for either a studio application or a live recording. But it is a basic tutorial. If you're really familiar with the Nectar, you may kind of peruse it for some bits and tips. Uh, but otherwise, let's just jump right in. So here's just a little sample of what we're going to be working on today, uh, playing and just live mixing a track, adjusting our levels. And being able to live record from the track um, of our selected choice. Alright, so let's get started. It's important to start by defining some terms because it's very important to understand what is being referred to by the various words. A mixer channel uh, pertains exclusively to one of the channels that is here in your main mixer. Uh, it may be associated with an instrument, it may not. It may be associated with a sequencer track, it may not. And it's really important to know the difference between those two when you're working, when trying to tie it together with your physical panorama. On this side, the sequencer track, when I talk about tracks, relates to one of these tracks in your sequencer. Think of the sequencer as a recording device and the, the sequencer track is one of the tracks in the recording device. To note in this example where the difference is and to start with tying it together to the panorama. The one permanent fixed entity of what controls what in the panorama because so much on the panorama has multiple has multiple control properties depending on what you're actually doing. However, there's one thing that is a final and absolute that your physical keyboard and the drum pads are always tied to the sequencer track that you have selected. So right now I have the string sequencer track and we're gonna talk about using this track button more later, but this track button on the panorama actually moves your tracks up and down and you can see that I'm selecting the different tracks. When I select the whistle track, then my keyboard and my drum pads control that. If you're familiar with using the sequencer in a fashion that is frequently used, and that is in terms of controlling a effect device or controlling parameters of one of your instruments, you'll notice that I have a sequencer track highlighted that is called main distortion, and it corresponds to this pulverizer unit that I have up top that I've recorded some modifications to the pulverizer dirt, and you can see that Right now, when I hit my keyboard, I am not getting any noticeable audio out of it because what my sequencer track, which is always tied to this keyboard and these drum pads, it's connected right now to the pulverizer unit. So as expected, I wouldn't be getting any sound out of it because it's just an effect unit. Um, and understanding that relationship is really important. So once again, your physical keyboard and your drum pads are always tied to your sequencer track which is not necessarily tied to uh, anything else except for the device that is listed in there. As I've discussed, your Nectar on-screen display is your constant connection to your propeller heads, reads, and integration, and things are constantly changing in here, but I want to make notice of a few things which will help you, uh, which always remain in the same place. And the first of these is the first line and the words that are largest, boldest. They'll always relate to whatever that the activity that you are hitting with your physical panorama at that moment in time. Um, it's going to tell you how that fader is hooked up to uh, reason. So you can see that I just slid channel four and it said channel four level. 
and I go over here, it says channel five level. You only have to touch the control slightly in order for it to pick up um, what, it's, what it needs to say. Uh, this works with the pan knobs that are up there. This works with your master fader. This works with all of the other dials. It works with the pads over here. Um, the only buttons that don't actually uh, have an impact are the select buttons down on the bottom. All of the other buttons will register a value in there and will help you to understand where you are uh, in conjunction with your reason integration. The second thing that is permanent on this screen is the second row here. And this always simply tells you in this, right now we're currently on sub base one, and that relates specifically to the sequencer track that you're associated with. So if I go, then it goes to the main distortion sequencer track. That word will always tell you what the name of the sequencer track is. And over here, it will tell you uh, where, if it is in a mixed channel, where it's going. And it'll also tell you what the instrument is in propeller heads. So those are two places where you can pick up visual cues from what the activity that you're doing is, how your nectar is tied into your uh, into reason. Okay, so now that we've got the easy permanent thing out of the way, uh, let's move over to a little to things that might be a little bit more confusing and complicated, where things start to change with your on-screen display and how to get your indicators for those. Um, so right now we're going to navigate uh, between our sequencer tracks, and I'm going to show you something that takes place uh, if everything's set up in a certain way. So when I move down to the organ chords. As you'd expect, I'm playing the organ chords, and also you may have noticed that we have a white highlight on the track in the mixer window. And additionally, when we move to our piano lead, you may have noticed that the motorized slider moved up by itself. That means that your motorized fader is attached to that sequencer uh, sequencer track and that channel as well, and that you can actually use that um, to modify the gain on there. So we have this positive reinforcement of on-screen information that tells me that my track indicator is white, my motorized fader has moved, the also additionally the select button down at the bottom shows me that I am there as well. So all of these things are very helpful when you're navigating your sequencer tracks. Um, you've got your motion, you've got your indicator, you've got all of that stuff. Uh, however, uh, there's a little bit of complication that might take place right here. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to move to my whistle track. And as you can see, the whistle track is highlighting in the sequencer. We've also got sound coming out, and but we're seeing that on what is mixer channel nine that that's where our um, that's where our sounds coming out of. And also on screen we don't have anything highlighted, and additionally we don't have a red button here. So ask yourself what happened? Can I not navigate to this? The answer here is kind of complicated. Is that in order for a sequencer track to be tied to a mixer channel, the name, the visual name, actually has to be the same. Uh, and so this is a, it's a propeller heads thing that allows you to name a uh, mixer channel differently than the sequencer track associated with it. Uh, but in terms of navigating with the panorama, it can be a little bit confusing. Now, if I actually go ahead and change the name of the mixer channel, to the same name um, as the sequencer track, then now you can see that stuff changed. We've got our white indicator. Um, we've got our level now actually matching our gain on the mixer. Um, and it appears that everything's tied together. So if you name your mixer channel differently than your sequencer track, then you will have a separation and you won't have it tied together. Uh, I'm going to quickly create a new instrument, uh, just randomly create an instrument. Uh, and I'm going to show you that if you create a new instrument, so this Kong 1 just got created here, as long as you keep the name and you rename it in the sequencer track, then you won't have a problem. It will still be tied to, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll still be tied together. If you rename it in the mixer channel, it'll actually break the, uh, it'll break that connection. So that's a, I think that's an important thing to kind of take note of because um, when you're playing and you're doing this live and there's a gap between the two, it, it can be confusing. So I would highly recommend either not renaming the tracks or making sure you rename them from the sequencer. 
Let's talk about the faders on the Nectar. You notice we have nine black faders. Here's another permanent thing on the Nectar. The ninth fader always pertains to the master level in reason. So that's always a fix that's there for you. And we talked about the motorized fader before, which corresponds to uh, your sequencer track. So we've got eight faders to work with. And you'll notice that we've already gotten to the point in this song where we actually have 10 mixer channels. So, um, Nectar provides you a way that you can navigate between uh, mix, multiple mixer channels using a concept of banks, and it's very easy to use. Uh, you can see right now is that we're dealing with, and, and on the on-screen display, although this might be a little bit too small, is your tracks are always numbered. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and master right there. If I go ahead and I use the shift button, and you'll notice the word bank over the track button, I hit shift and plus, and you'll note that my, uh, my faders have changed to correspond to 9 and 10. If I move uh, them now, then you'll see that these correspond to the last two tracks on uh, the, on our, on our, I'm sorry, the last two mixer channels on our, uh, on our screen. And if I go ahead and I go back to this bank again and move these, then they're going to correspond to the mixer channels, which are corresponding to mixer channels 1 through 8. So that is how we deal with multiple uh, mixer channels because we frequently record songs that have many more than eight mixer channels associated with them. The very last thing that we're going to go over in this tutorial, there's a million things that we could go over, but I just want to show you one really cool, useful button that is here and also clarify what these buttons at the bottom of your faders actually do because they actually have three potential functions. Uh, they can either be used to solo a track, to mute a track or to select a track. And by selecting a track, what it means is selecting a track for activity within Panorama. We're not really gonna get into that very much today. Uh, I just wanna show you that this, so this button that says toggle mute, when you click it, then it changes the functionality of this but row of buttons here. And you can see actually that there's an indicator up top that says button mode and it has changed to select. I did a longer tutorial about this, um, but right now we're just going to use it really briefly, is that now if I click it again, then it toggles the button mode to be mute, and it click it again, toggles the button mode to be solo. Uh, this is really, really useful in either a live performance or when you're mastering or doing something in the, in the studio where you want to, um, where you want to solo something, but just, you know, to give you a performance of this, you know, I've got um, solo my sub bass track either to listen to it or for a breakdown in, uh, in a live performance. And additionally, mute can be very useful, so I'm going to mute out a couple of the tracks. And you can see on screen that the mute indicators in the mixer channels are activated, and then when I unselect then uh, the tracks, uh, the mixer channels are back in there. Alright, that's about as far as I'm going to go today. I've got a million things I can tell you about the Nectar and if you like it or you're interested in more, please subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. I'll get back in touch with you. We'll be producing some more videos. If you don't own a Nectar and you just stopped by to check it out and you are a Propeller Eds user, Go ahead and get one. It's the best thing you could possibly do for your musical experience. And I look forward to you stopping by in the future and sharing more information about how you're using your nectar and we'll move forward from there.